So we have lots of tools to study the universe. We have very powerful telescopes that can look out at galaxies and stars. And one of the first puzzles that was discovered a few decades ago is that stars move too fast. People can add up all the visible matter, all the stars, hot gas, and so on. And it's not enough to explain how fast the stars revolve around the center of the galaxy. It's as if there's something there that no telescope can see, and that's dark matter. So there's really a wide consensus that dark matter exists. However, nobody to date has ever directly detected dark matter. What we do know is that there's a lot more dark matter than visible matter, and it must permeate everywhere. It must be moving through us right now. There are many possibilities for what dark matter might be, and the prevailing theory over the last few decades is that the dark matter might consist of a weakly interacting massive particle called a WIMP. So the way people have been searching for these WIMPs is by building large detectors. Picture a swimming pool roughly the size of a house. And if a WIMP were to pass by and interact with an atom inside the swimming pool, it would produce a little flash of light that a bunch of photomultiplier tubes, which are very sensitive light detectors, would detect. But after several decades of searching with these detectors, people haven't yet found a WIMP. However, there's another theory for what dark matter might be, and that's a different particle called an axion, and that's what we're looking for in my laboratory. Axions, if they exist, are very different from a WIMP. For starters, they're much lighter. So a WIMP is roughly the mass of a neutron or a proton, and an axion is much lighter than even a neutrino. Because an axion is much lighter, it's probably easier to think of them as a wave rather than a particle. Searching for axions is very different to searching for WIMPs. We're starting up on a much smaller scale, so in a lab roughly the size of your kitchen, picture a bucket. And inside this bucket, there's a few samples that basically act like little magnets. And if the axions exist, what will happen to these little magnets is tiny little gyrations. And we have very, very sensitive magnetic field sensors that are designed to pick up these gyrations. Of course, there's a lot of things that might make these magnets gyrate, such as your cell phone or a truck going by outside on the street. And so a huge part of our job is to shield our experiment well enough so that what we detect is not some interference, but could only be caused by axions. Our goal is to make a really, really sensitive experiment so that eventually, when everything works correctly, hopefully we can hear this axion feel see our motion through it. It's something that no one's ever tried before. You're really doing something that, that we as a human race don't know how to do, have never known how to do, have never tried. <laughs>